Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I'm reviewing the Picasso Tab XL drawing tablet from the company Simbens. So this is an 11.6 inch tablet running on Android OS. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage and has pen support. And the price at the time of this review is US $259. A disclaimer first before I start the review. This is a review unit provided by Simbenz. However, all the opinions in this video are mine. And this video is going to be quite long. So if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a budget tablet targeted at beginners. It comes with an 11.6 inch IPS LCD and it runs on Android 11. And these are the specifications listed on the site. The main selling point here is the pricing because this is very affordable, relatively speaking, compared to other tablets and it comes with the pen and the flip cover case. The main thing here is you have to manage your expectations given the specifications of the tablet. This is not the most responsive tablet, but I can say that it's sluggish. Uh, it just takes a bit more time to open apps, to load web pages, and a bit longer to install apps that you can find from the Google Play Store. When it comes to switching between apps, it seems to be smooth enough. And the finger gesture animation for zooming in and out, rotate and panning seems to be smooth as well. When it comes to drawing performance, the diagonal lines are affected by wobble or jitter. Straight lines are fine, but diagonal lines, you can see there is slight wobble. There are other things that affect drawing performance, which I will talk about later. The overall drawing experience is all right, I guess, but I didn't really expect much from the drawing performance given the pricing of the tablet. And from the Amazon reviews that I have seen, it seems like there are many parents who bought the tablet for their kids. Children are not going to be that fussy because as long as they have a tablet to draw on, they are going to be very happy. Is this tablet good enough for professional art? No, definitely not. Is this good enough for casual sketching and drawing? I think it works fine. This sketch turned out all right and I had a lot of difficulties drawing this uh, mainly because I have to work around the limitations of the tablet. Let's look at the items included in the box. There is one artist glove. This is a USB-C to A charging cable, USB-A adapter with the plugs, the pen, one battery for the pen, quick start guide and warranty info and this is the case for the tablet. This is the included pen. The model is PP2. The build quality is very solid. It's full metal. It's comfortable to hold with the matte textured surface. There's a clip at the back which is just to prevent the pen from sliding out from the pen holder on the case. This pen is powered by one battery. This is an AA, AA battery. Based on my experience with other similar stylus, battery life is probably at least six months. This pen supports 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. The pen tip is full plastic and there is slight movement to it. This pen tip is quite slippery on the display. There is palm rejection. However, how effective palm rejection will be will depend on the app you use. There is no support for tilt sensitivity. I suspect the pen actually uses Microsoft Pen Protocol because this tablet can be used with the Microsoft Surface Pen and the Microsoft Slim Pen 2. However, the performance of these two pens is exactly the same as the Simbenz pen. There is no tilt sensitivity with the Surface Pen because the tablet probably doesn't support tilt sensitivity. Let's look at the tablet case and stand. This material is quite tough. It's some canvas-like material. There is an elastic band to hold the two covers, the front and back together. And you can fold this um, to prop up the tablet. Inside, we have a very soft surface here. And this is a hard shell, plastic shell. So 
can just place the tablet here and it snaps into position. The weight is very manageable. This is not very heavy. And on the back, there are two flaps here that you have to use to hook onto the cover to prop up the tablet. And it's actually not that easy to push the cover into the flap because this is quite tight. So you can prop up the tablet this way. You can use the other flap to make the display more vertical. This angle, of course, is not going to be that comfortable for drawing, so you can actually use the case this way so that the tablet is at a lower angle. The stock Android 11 OS has this funny glitch where if you open the app before you rotate the tablet, the thumbnails for those open apps will appear upside down. But once you open the app again, the orientation will switch. And there is a pen holder on the side of the case for the pen. They should have included another elastic band here to hold the pen because otherwise the pen is dangling. And this elastic band will hold the uh, front and back covers together. Design of the tablet looks all right. It's nothing fancy. There are rounded corners. The display is very reflective. This is actually a glass screen protector that's already applied on the display. There is a 5 megapixel camera in front, 8 megapixel camera behind, two front facing speakers at the bottom. The audio quality unfortunately is quite hollow. At the bottom there are some connectors probably for keyboard or something else. The tablet is quite thin. It's about as thin as the included pen which is quite thin. The back is matte textured and it feels nice. The ports are labeled. This is a micro SD card slot, USB type C for charging, and this is a micro HDMI port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. On this side, there is the power button and the volume controls, which are interestingly colored red. The ports are located here at the top. I don't have a micro HDMI cable, so I can't tell you whether or not this tablet can output video signal. The colors on this display look all right. I can tell for a fact that this is not 100% sRGB, but the colors, they do look fine. If you look at the tablet from uh, this angle, if you tilt the tablet up and down like this, you can see color shift. If you look at the tablet from left to right, the color shift is not as obvious. The brightness uh, seems to be all right. Right now, my room is very bright and I can see the visuals quite clearly, so brightness is adequate. The resolution of this display is 1366 by 768, so there is slight pixelation. The resolution is lower than 1080p, but on a small display, the visuals can still be considered quite sharp. With this resolution, I can have palettes on the left and right side and still get this amount of space to work with, so it's not too bad. If you hide the palettes, you can get more space and this is slightly larger compared to an A5 size sketchbook, so you get more width here on the side. The processor on this tablet is not as powerful compared to more expensive tablets, so the overall performance is also not as responsive compared to those pricier tablets. However, the overall performance, I think it's fine for a budget tablet at this price. So let's open up an app. So this is the speed that apps will open. Let's load a web page. My web page, my blog, it loads pretty quickly. Let's open up Google Play Store. So there is Google Play Store. And because there is the Play Store, you can install and have access to a huge variety of apps and uh, loading is quite fast. Sometimes the keyboard will take a split second to come up, but um, it's fine. Switching between apps seems fine. There is only four gigs of RAM. So when it comes to multitasking, Maybe it's best not to have that many apps open. Sure, the performance is not as responsive, but I won't go as far to say that 
the tablet is sluggish. There will be people who just want to stick to a certain budget and they don't want to spend that much money. So at this price point, it's difficult to find another tablet that comes with the pen and tablet case included. The display is not laminated, so there is a gap between the line and the pen tip. And you can see some latency with this app, which is Medibank Paint Pro. That gap between the line and the pen tip is more problematic on larger displays because you will see more noticeable parallax, but on smaller displays, it's usually not an issue. For this review unit that I have, there seems to be some cursor misalignment issue on the left side of the display for some reason, but not on the right side. The company says this is a software issue and has provided me with a software update. It managed to reduce the cursor misalignment, but as you can see, the line still appears slightly to the right side of the pen tip. You can further reduce cursor misalignment by holding the pen more vertically. So when the pen is held more vertically, the line will be closer to the pen tip. Now this looks better. When there is cursor misalignment, it can be difficult to join lines like this without the lines overshooting or without creating gaps. So after the software fix, I was able to draw a bit more accurately. Before the software fix, when I tried to draw this box, it appears like this. Sometimes there are lines overshooting, sometimes there are gaps when I'm trying to join the lines because of the misalignment. So now cursor misalignment is much less of an issue. Before the software update, it was a deal breaker. Cursor misalignment obviously is not ideal. I told the company about it and they said it's probably an isolated incident. They said they tested on 10 units on hand, but they did not experience the same cursor misalignment issues that I experienced. And I saw a video of them doing their test and the pen worked fine without any misalignment issues. So hopefully it's really just an isolated incident with this particular review unit. Let's talk about the drawing experience. This app that I'm using is Medibank Paint Pro. So let's take a closer look at this sketch that I have partially drawn. I actually have some difficulty drawing this sketch. Let's draw a diagonal line here. I can see slight wobble with the line and you can see that with the earlier line that I drew as well. This line here at the top is much straighter because I drew this really quickly. So is that going to be a problem? Well, it could be depending on your drawing speed. If you draw fast, the lines will be smoother. Also note that for this particular app, Medibank Paint Pro, it actually has more latency compared to other drawing apps that I have tested. So here you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip. So latency is going to affect the drawing experience as well. For example, I was able to draw this drawing. It's just that my experience is affected by the diagonal line wobble and the latency. Palm rejection with Medibank Paint Pro works quite well. I can use my finger or my palm on the display and I cannot introduce any stray strokes even if I want to. One issue with palm rejection is this app can use two fingers to undo. However, I find that I get accidental undos quite often, which is why I turn off the double finger undo. So now if I need to undo, I'll use the shortcut buttons on the interface. Another thing that affects drawing experience is how slippery the display is because this glossy display is 
kind of slippery so that again will take some time to get used to so if I have to undo I have to tap on that button oops again I usually use my other finger to tap on the undo button so it's not too bad if I cannot use two fingers to undo the pen only supports up to slightly over a thousand levels of pressure sensitivity so that's another limitation but initial activation force seems all right as in I can draw thin lines quite easily I can have the thin lines become thick and thin um, no problems there I can create textures here on the road by tapping on the display this is not the most sensitive pen but it can be used for drawing for painting again you will see the latency if you paint very quickly but it works fine I mean for a budget tablet the performance uh, this level of performance is exactly what I would expect the issue with diagonal line wobble and jitter will affect drawing performance and this app is sketchbook pro which is pre-installed on the tablet here you can see the lines they are quite wobbly let me continue to draw the shoelace so you can see slight wobble with the lines let me zoom in for you to see so you can see there's slight wobble and now let me draw this long line as smooth as I possibly can so I can see slight wobble with the lines here and on this side I drew this a bit faster so this is smoother but as you can see there is still wobble here and here as well this tablet can be used for drawing but you have to know its limitations this app is concepts and this app performs better with the pen compared to the other apps at least with this pencil brush that I'm using so if I draw diagonal lines like this the wobble and the jitter with this particular brush is actually not as obvious and I really enjoy drawing with this app and this app has perfect palm rejection as well when I use my finger to draw I actually will move the canvas instead of drawing straight strokes the latency with concepts is actually much better so the lines they come out much faster compared to when I was using Medibank Paint Pro where the line is always trying to chase the pen tip but here drawing is more responsive drawing feels more responsive yep so this app uh, with concepts I can actually use this app to do some quick sketching all right to conclude I don't think this tablet is going to be good enough to create professional art but for quick sketches such as the one that I'm drawing right now uh, for quick sketches it works fine for casual sketches it's gonna work fine just make sure you test different apps to get the app that works best for drawing to get the app that has the best latency response uh, because certain apps the lag is very obvious so the main selling point here is really the pricing which is very affordable if you have more budget um, of course you can get better tablets but the thing is sometimes um, people they do have limited budget and usually when I review products I will always get comments in the comments section saying that hey why not you spend why not spend a bit more to get a better product but the thing is not everyone has the ability to spend a bit more so that's where this um, budget tablets um, come in this tablet should be suitable for kids for beginners I guess 
All right, before you go, I just want to let you know that I review a lot of tablets and pen displays. So if you want to buy any tablet or pen displays, um, just do a search on my blog and also this YouTube channel. I hope this review is useful. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.